Welcome to Learn the Sword. We've been working on standing Iaido, standing swordsmanship. There are a lot of sword styles out there that use Seiza or Seiza Toho, which means you do those Japanese kneeling positions and then work the sword groups from there. As a general rule, it teaches you really good education on looking prim and proper. Nice straight back, hands perfectly placed, posture very, very good, and those aspects with it. When you, dealing, when you deal with a standing art, a tachi eye type of art, it's more of a militaristic view because basically you have to go into battle and people who are on their knees don't go into battle too easily. If you're dealing with Seiza Toho, it's more of a, a traditional or a classical style where you see in lots of movies and lots of different aspects was where they're on their knees and they're starting out that way. My first Iaido series that I practiced was the one set out by the All Japan Kendo Federation, the Seite series, in which taught me how to sit on my knees correctly, which is very, very important. Even though here in a Western world, we're not gonna be on our knees too much, I like to give you a couple of pointers on how to go down on your knees and come up and make it a little bit more technical. So even though it's easy to get up and down now as a young person, what happens when you're 60 or 70? It's hard to use these muscles if you don't use technique on getting up and getting down. Now, first thing that I wanna talk about is a lot of times when people are sitting in Seiza, it's really, really hard because it's taking this part of the area here and it's stretching this out, it's stretching out this part, it's pulling this part here. And for lots of people, they can do it, but just for a minute or two. You know, over in Japan, you're dealing with 50 or 60 years olds. It's amazing that they can spend hours upon their knees. So what I'd like you to know is, it isn't just the Ido where you stand, spend time on your knees with the classical stuff. It's that in Japan, most people do a Seiza position anyway, just because that's part of their everyday normal way of life. As with the sitting, I want you to look at the bad habits a little bit. A lot of times if I was sitting as a kid in a chair, for example, I would sit with my feet down flat on the ground sitting in the chair properly. But you know, if you're a kid, you're sitting on the chair and your legs over here, your butt's halfway off the chair, and hey, it's more comfortable. Before, you used to get slapped away from the table for that. Now during dinner, a lot of times no one really cares how you sit. Same thing has happened in the Seiza position where you place your feet. For example, if I turn around this way, like this, see where my toes are all lined up? They're nice lined up straight, which means that if my butt cheeks here are landing on my heels like this, it gives me very good support. Moreover, my back is very straight and my posture is good. This is where a lot of younger people start throwing in, hey, their bad habit was just fine, but you'll see stuff like this and their feet sitting like this. This is great. It's very colloquial if you want to put it that way. But you can see how my back turns a little bit and I have to make some adjustments in the hips here to make sure my back stays straight. A lot of people come in and they cross their toes like this, just like that a lot of it. And that gives them a, a focal point. Some people come in and they cross their feet like this a lot of the time too, which gives them a little bit more feeling and they can sit and they can sit down on this a little bit better. The problem arises is, is that we as foreigners who are starting to learn swordsmanship should start correctly to begin with because, hey, we haven't gone through the teenage years trying to move our feet. So what I want us to do is sit down, sit back like this. Here's a side view and just make your posture really easy. Keep it simple. Now, let's go back to what I was saying earlier. 
This is really, really hard for a lot of people to do. So what I would suggest is, is that you go in and put down a, a pad or get on top of your bed if you have a TV or are in front of it and sit on the bed in a seiza position and the pillow and the mattress will sort of break the, the hardness on your leg and it will allow you to stretch in. But if you start to stretch in a couple of minutes a day like this, and then three minutes a day and five minutes a day and 10 and 15 minutes a day over time you'll be able to do a traditional seiza like this without hurting yourself i mean when i say hurting yourself without you know being uncomfortable and a lot of times a seiza position is very very uncomfortable for beginners